Yeah, you're on. I see my pop-up has just come. Yay. So we are officially live. Yay us. And this is day five of the boot camp on Mailing Boss and how to make your mailing list work for you. So we're going to actually go through and look at a couple of things on uh, emails uh, just to clean up uh, making the email sequence. We'll look at uh, making a regular email, which is also known as a broadcast email. And then we'll start looking at some analytics and see if we can look at the analytics of these things. Then we're going to jump into how to do a contact form and an email marketing form, how to connect it to Mailing Boss and get those leads going into your subscriber list. And, uh, and then we'll clean up how to do, how to get your emails into a, an inbox as best you can. Uh, Davida. Okay. Shelly, can I say that I got uh, 30, about 34 leads off of my solo ad? That's really good. That's fantastic. I love that. And, yeah. And I, I, I found out that whatever you, whatever I did got them into my mailing box good. and then they started following. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. So now your job is to use that email list to keep that list warm. So you're going to contact them, create that no like and trust. You're going to tell them about yourself, about the company. Don't hit them every email with Builderall, buy this, buy this, buy this. Hit them with some value and then hit them with Builderall. And then hit them with value and hit them with Builderall. Okay. You're trying to make a list that you're creating a, a relationship with. And you want, when they see your name or however you're going to do the subject line, when they see that, they'll go, oh, I need to see that email because I know she's got value in there. And let me tell you, yeah. one of the things that will help you is, uh, I just and I just ran into this again yesterday. I had a, a client that was actually under Chad Bartlett, and the client contacted support. Support couldn't help her. So I said, look, let me spend five minutes. I know I can, I can figure it out. So we jumped on and did a Zoom, and she did not know about Control-C and Control-V right? Control C for copying, control V for, for paste. If you have a Mac, it's command C, and command V is invalid. So she was trying to right click inside of a field and paste a link and it, it wouldn't work. The right click wouldn't work. So that's all it took was to show her how to do control C and control V. That's a value video, right? That's that as simple as it sounds. That's a value video that you can throw a link to it inside your, uh, inside your email. And say, uh, just in case you don't know, here's a shortcut on how to do um, copy and paste on your uh, laptop or on your keyboard uh, so that it will help you with copying and pasting things. It doesn't have to be a big fanfare, but you've just given them some value. Okay? So you always want to try to give value. It's In my mind, it's value, value, offer, value, value, offer, mm. value, value, offer. Okay? Um, David? Um, no. Okay. I was just thinking about mailing boss and subdomains, right? Uh -huh. When you're using a subdomain and you want to create a, an email address from that subdomain, can you actually do that? Uh, you can't do an email on a subdomain. Right. Um, it only so goes on the domain. So you'd call it whatever, whatever the the before the the domain is at. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Cool. Put it put it on the main domain, not the subdomain. Right. Grand job. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Any other Hello, questions? Hello, everybody. It's great to see you guys on this wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Um, <laughs> and it's it's a little bit cloudy for us today, so I, I'm going to stay inside again and just kind of rest and relax. But this is my rest and relaxation, too. As much as you guys um, think, oh, my gosh, if you're sick, Shelly, don't do the training. I actually get sicker if I don't do the training sometimes. <laughs> <So> <laughs> So anyway, let's go ahead and talk about email and uh, what we can do with the email once we get in there and get our sequence in. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to go into our trusty little uh, screen right here. And let me minimize this so everybody can see. And, uh, and I'm going to go into Mailing Boss. So I'm going to scroll up here and click. And then I'm going to click this area right here. There we go. And now I'm officially in Mailing Boss. And if you remember, this has been the subscriber list that we've been working in, right? And if we want to go check our emails, I can probably the fastest way to do it is to go into campaigns and then email sequence. When I go into email sequence, this is the um, email sequence right here. I've identified what list it's a part of. I've identified the email sequence that it's number one for that list. I can have several email sequences that are a part of a list. 
um, I can do 50,000 if I want to. So I need to make sure I'm identifying that email sequence as well. Inside here, I have five campaigns, which are individual emails. And then you can see when they were added, when they were updated. And then I have these lovely options right here. Now I'm gonna go into the campaigns. So I'm gonna click this blue button right here and click manage campaigns. And then I want you to notice that there's one campaign that looks different than the others. And that is this bottom one. It has the pause button. And I'm gonna go ahead and activate all of these. So I'm gonna go into each individual one and activate. So let's see if we can do that. So I'm going to update. And I'm gonna go into uh, save it next. And save it next. And there's my email right there. And I'm going to click um, Save it Next. And then I'm going to make sure everything is OK right here. And I'm going to click Save and Activate. And now that one's actually activated and ready to go. And you'll see that it looks just like this one. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to go to Update and just update all of these and activate them. Now, you know, there's another way we can do this. We can go into that other screen that has all five emails on them and, uh, and activate them that way, too. So there's uh, several different ways to do it. This way, though, gets you to the advanced editor in case you want to do anything extra. I'm just going to go here, update, and save it next, and save it next, and then save it next. and then save and activate. And one more to go. I'm gonna go ahead and go to um, update and save it next and save it next and save it next and then save and activate. So now we should have that all of these emails are activated. And now I'm gonna click on this email right here and I'm just gonna click on the, that first item that is a hyperlink. When I click on it, you can see that it's gonna take me to some advanced uh, analytics. And this is actually a really great place. The only way you can see this is if it's activated. If it's not activated, then it's gonna come up uh, with something else. But if it's activated, it doesn't want you to change the email. So it comes up with the, um, with the analytics. So if you don't wanna see the analytics and you wanna go into the email, then you have to pause it. But when it's active, it will take you to the campaign overview. And it tells you how many emails have been sent, the open rate, the click-through rate. You can also click details. So if I click view details, um, it comes up with a, uh, some more details. And I can actually export the report. So that's really cool. And if I scroll down, I can see a bounce rate. That means did that email um, bounce back because it's not a valid email. It tells me how many of those did that. And you can view details. And then the unsubscribe rate, meaning how many people click unsubscribe to your list. Then you've got more information. You can click that. And now you've got um, view all clicks for click links, view the latest clicks. So you can click those to find more information. The latest opens, the top link that was clicked, and subscribers with the most open. So there's, again, some more information about your list that you can find out. You just click any one of those, and it will take you to a report. And then usually most of those reports have an export function and you can export it to take a look. Um, and then we've got the another overview here that you can't really change, but it just tells you information about your list. And then uh, right here, you can actually look at a web version of your uh, email. So I can click that and it shows me what that email looks like on the web version. Okay. And then you've got the number of forwards. It shows you zero and abuse is zero. And, and then more information about your list. So this is a great place to get some uh, detailed analytics about your email. And then um, if I go back to the email sequences and I've got this uh, email sequence number one and they're all active. Remember I can go in this way and I can, instead of going in individually, I can go here and either activate or pause. So that's another way that I can go in and activate or pause. And then when I'm done, I can click done and it will take me to those uh, settings right there. Some more analytics that you can look at on the fly. And it gives it per email. And then it gives it for the total subscribers, confirmed subscribers, et cetera. So you've got a couple of different places that you can look at analytics to see how your emails are doing.
Okay, so I'm gonna look at your eyeballs and make sure that all of you guys understand that. Everybody okay with that so far? Okay, good. All right, let's jump back in. And today I'm gonna to show you how to do a regular email, which is actually a broadcast email. Dominic, did you have a question? Yeah, okay, so now when it bounces back, does that mean that's not a valid uh, email and we should like exit, like delete it? Yes, that when it bounces, that means that it cannot find a box to <laughs> drop it into. So it bounces back and says not valid. Did, did you happen to find out the spam score? Zero or oh, five no, I is better? I, I did not. I did not ask again. I forgot to ask again. So I will ask again. Because <laughs> I got a 4.5 and I'm not sure whether to be happy or sad. I, I can't remember, honestly. And this is one that for some reason, every time I ask it, as soon as I get the answer, it just flies out of my head and goes away. So <laughs> okay. I'll try to find out for sure again. Okay. Um, David. Yeah, just uh, on Dominic's point there, uh, would you should you delete that uh, mm -hmm. um, email address that bounces back? Yeah, if you're I getting the email that bounces. I, yeah, I I wouldn't, and I'll tell you why. Because I I use Incredimail. Mm -hmm. I can click a button to bounce it back myself. Okay, mm -hmm. so some depending on what what email. Um, well, we, we say software just for the want of argument, right? Mm -hmm. You can actually bounce it physically hmm. back to the person without it going back automatically. It's That's pretty cool. I think, though, for, in my opinion, though, if it bounced at all, if they if they did it manually, well, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I would, I would take good. them up anyway because they're not yeah. wanting my email anyway. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah, yeah. You're probably right there, actually. Thanks, Melinda. Yeah, and that'll that'll mess up your open rate. It'll mess up your click through rate, everything. So get them off the list, and and that way it'll your your all those important numbers will start to go up. Dominic. Yeah, on the on the on the spam rate, I believe it's I believe you're you're searching for zero. The more spammy your email is, the higher the rating. So if you had a four point five, I think I'd be worried. I, I honestly can't remember. <laughs> we, I, I, maybe I'm we can sure. maybe we can test it with some words and stuff later and see what kind of score we can get. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, let's go ahead and jump back in and, and take a look at a broadcast email or what's called in this system a regular email. So I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm in Mailing Boss. And all I'm going to do is go to campaign and then I'm going to choose email regular. And all this is, is a single email. We're going to send it one time at a very specific date and time. And that's it. So it's not going to be dependent on whether they've been on the list for two days or four days or six days or eight days. It doesn't even matter because if they've joined on Monday at eight o'clock and this email is supposed to go Monday at nine o'clock, they'll get it. If they join Monday at 10 o'clock, they won't get it because it already sent. Okay. So I'm going to jump in here and see if I can find my noise. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So to do a um, broadcast email, we have to uh, go ahead and go into that broadcast email area. And all of these are showing that they're actually uh, autoresponder um, emails, right? So I'm going to go ahead and choose create new. <clears throat> when I hit create new, everything that you see is going to look actually really similar to what um, the broad, or sorry, what the uh, sequence email looks like. We have almost <clears throat> almost the same field. So let's go ahead and, and name this. So I'm going to say Shelly's awesome list, and I'm going to say um, let me see. I'll say regular email one and then i'll say that this is going to go out um oh what what are we now third month so oh three um 31 2019. so i'll put my date on it that i want it to go out and and make sure to put as much information as you can in that name because it will get confusing when you start running into doing automation segmentation and working with tags and picking out what, who you want to send to what, um, it actually is hard to see what you're pulling unless you've done a really good job of uh, being really descriptive in your campaigns. So in the type right here, we have a choice of regular or autoresponder. So in this one, we're going to go regular, which means it's a one-time email on a specific date at a specific time. 
We don't have any sequences set up, so this one's um, just not going to have any that we could choose from. So we'll just uh, keep it right here as you know, blank, nothing in there. Now we have to choose the list that this regular email is attached to. And of course, it's going to be attached to uh, Shelly's awesome list number two, because that's the one we've been working on. Um, we don't have any segments set up ourselves. There's some default segments in here. Like I could send to only users that clicked uh, at least one link or users that never clicked on a link or users that never opened a campaign or users that opened at least one campaign. So if you want to segment them, you can. We won't do that here. Then we have lead score. Lead score is where you decide what score you want this person to have in order to get this email. And uh, in the beginning, when you set up the subscriber list in the advanced settings, you could set the lead score as they get um, 50 points if they open the email and another 50 points if they click any links. So you could actually set it. So it, this only sends to people that have a lead score of maybe 100 to 200. And it would find everybody that has that lead score and it would send to only them. I'm going to keep this empty because we're not going to worry about lead score. Then we've got tags. Tags are the way you kind of put stickers on people to identify them. We don't have any tags yet. And, uh, and that's all I need to set for this regular email campaign on this screen. So I'm going to go save and next. And now I need to fill out the uh, from name the from email and the reply to email. It's pulling all my default information. So um, all my default information is in there. This one, the to name, we don't have to change. And then we can put the subject right here. So I'm gonna put the subject of Shelly is sending you a regular email. And then we've got some advanced settings. And on advanced settings, so if I pull up, these are real similar to the other types of emails you can do. So you can click yes to open tracking, yes to UR tracking, um, yes or no to JSON feed. All of these are things that you can work with. But again, until you get advanced, I would say that you don't mess with that area at all right now. So we're just going to fill out this area, make sure it's all correct. And then we're going to go down here and click save index. And then remember, we're working with a single email. So every time we with a single email, we get this lovely advanced editor. So we can change this uh, email a little bit. Let's say, um, Shelly, here's sending you a regular email. And I'll go ahead and do the hello, hello, like that. And I'll put my little first name tag in there. So I click down here that says available tags. And I scroll down to find that first name. So if you can find it right there. So now I've got hello first name. Shelly is sending you a regular email. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in and then click save and next. And it says, what time do you want to send it? So I've got it set for 331, which is today. Then we'll set it for, um, let's see right now, it is 1120. So 331, find that for Shelly. And then we'll send it at 2. No, 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 no. Not 2 a.m. Let's try this again. 31. We'll set it at 2 o'clock p.m. Perfect. There we go. So on the 31st at 2 p.m. And then, of course, we make sure we've got everything that we need in here. I'll go ahead and click the spam score and see what I've got. And between 0 and 5, your spam score is a 0. I, I'm not sure, but hopefully that's good. And then I'm going to click save and activate. And so now I've got um, my email list right here that shows me all of the individual email campaigns I've got going. I've got five of them in an email sequence and then one of them in an email regular. And I want you to notice here, guys, this is so critical because remember I put sequence here and I put regular here. So you can see that which ones are a sequence and which ones are regular based on how I labeled them. Now you can go to show advanced and it will show you more information. So it shows you that this is a regular and this is an autoresponder. So you can get more information by clicking that show advanced button. Um, but for the first glance, the, re the real quick glance when it pops up, you'll see and not have to click that if you don't need to. So it's just a way of identifying your emails. Um, by naming them and using a naming convention that will help you identify your emails faster and better. 
But now this email is ready to go and uh, the regular email that we just made. And it will be uh, sent out on the 31st at 2 o'clock p.m. And that's according to my time zone that I have for my profile settings. And I think we had a heck of a time finding the profile settings for Central Time. So I'm going to go into Christy Lynn and I'm going to change my timing here. So I'm going to see if I can find my time this time. Um, and I think I'm like a negative five or something like that. So let me check it out. There's negative three, negative four. And keep going. And come on, negative five. You guys be patient as I find the negative fives. Be Pacific. We're getting closer. North Dakota, that's definitely not me. Indiana, there it is, America, Chicago. So now I have the correct time in there and I'm gonna click save changes. And now what it's gonna do is on that broadcast email, anybody that's on my um, subscriber list, um, on today at two o'clock PM, they will all get this email, okay? Then it's sent and it's done. It won't send again, okay? Got it? So can anybody tell me what the difference is between a sequence and then just a regular email. What's the difference between the two? Anybody got some good ideas on how to explain that, Tyree? Yes. Uh, a show show email or regular email is one email that you can send out without any additional email attached to that email. You can use it as a broadcast or as a special message. Um, and again, that's one email only about that subject, none attached. A sequence is one or more emails, one, two, three, four, five, one or more emails that begins and, and begin that continues to one after the other about a particular subject, about uh, a way to, uh, again, a particular subject uh, uh, to keep people, to stay connected to people about that, which you are speaking with them about on those subjects. Mm -hmm. And remember that the email sequence is going to go automatically based on when the person subscribes. So if I subscribe, uh, subscribe today, I'm gonna get all the, the same emails that you would get if you subscribe tomorrow, but we both will get them on different days because it's right. automated based on the day that we sign up. But and a regular email, you and me, Tyree, would get the email on the same day at the same time. Right, and each email in the sequence will go out at the time that you set for each one of those emails to go out. Because That's exactly they have it. a different time, diff, you know, a different time for each email. But you can set uh, separately to go out at different times. Excellent. Very good job. So you guys, you guys feel like you're grasping email sequence versus the regular email? You feel comfortable with it? Good job. Good job. I see those thumbs up. Good job, you guys. You guys are awesome. All right. So now that we've looked at the email sequence and the email regular, Let's go ahead and throw together a sample web page, a really simple web page, and we're going to see how we can connect to the email list and get people signing up. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a share, and I'll jump into my account, and we're going to just go ahead and create a, a new uh, site. So I'm going to go to new website, and then I'm going to go down here to blank page. And you'll see there's a lot of blank pages, but I'm going to use the one that's really, really blank, which is right here, the blank layout clean, and I'll click edit. And then I've got my, um, my editor open, and I'm going to click save. That's the first thing I do, because save is your friend. And uh, we'll call this email training boot camp one. And I'll click send and then save. And so now I've got everything saved. And if I had to jump out and go do something, I could come back to this and actually look at it again. So now what I'm going to do is look at a uh, email marketing form first. We've got two different types of forms we can use. I'm going to click the plus button. And I'm going to go down to email marketing form right here. And I'm going to click that form. And we've got a lot of forms that are available, guys. There's they're wonderful, actually, but I'm not going to get too fancy schmancy on you today. I'm just going to click that top one so you can see what I'm doing. 
So I've got my opt-in form right there. And uh, let me check our microphones again. Hold on. Okay, there we go. All right, so let me jump back in. So I've got my email marketing form. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it and I'm going to go to configure. When I hit configure, it says, what do you want to connect to? You want to connect to Mailing Boss, Active Campaign, MailChimp. All of these are possible uh, platforms that you can connect to and get your subscribers out of your website and into your subscriber list on whatever email platform you've chosen. But of course, we're focusing on Mailing Boss today. So we're going to click Mailing Boss. And then what it does is it connects to my account in Mailing Boss and it pulls back all of the lists that I have set up. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this Shelly's Awesome List copy number two. And now it's actually connected. And I want you to notice that before I connected it, it had email first and then first name. This form will pull in any fields that you have. Let me look at your eyeballs. If we went into this subscriber list, this Shelly's Awesome List, and we added four more fields. Okay, so we're collecting the first name, the email. Then we said we want to collect last name, phone number, um, blood type, you know, whatever we want to collect. GDRP. GDPR, yeah. Or GDPR, um, sorry. Right. Um, whatever we add to it, it's going to go, that form is going to have to go reconnect to Mailing Boss, go get those fields, and pull them back. So if at any time you ever change the fields that you have in Mailing Boss, you need to reconnect your form. A lot of people don't know that. Write that down, highlight it, underline it, circle it, tattoo it on your forehead if you need to. Because it's easy to forget once you go into Mailing Boss and you're like, oh, wait, I want to collect their last name. I'm going to go ahead and add that in. But then when you go to the live website, the last name field isn't there. And it's because you haven't gone into that opt-in form and clicked uh, change again or, or whatever it was, that first one, um, and connected it to Mailing Boss again. Okay, so make sure you know that because it's a little bit tricky. <laughs> That's one of those tips and tricks that you get because you are with me. So let's say I've gone back and added a field to Mailing Boss. All I do is right click and go to configure right here. And I would choose that list again. It's so simple. You just choose it again. And, uh, and that's all you got to do is click it and it's ready to go. It'll pull in that new field and, uh, and you'll see it. I also want you to notice that it goes in the same order that I have it in Mailing Boss. That I want to I wanna look at your eyeballs again. Um, I do not like the email first. I don't like it to say email and then first name. That just, I don't know why that bothers me. It's, I don't have OCD bad, but I have a bit of it and that bothers me. So what I do is I go into Mailing Boss and make sure the sort order for all the fields are exactly what I want. So that sort order, I'm going to set the first name is number one and the email is number two. And then when I pull it into my form, it has them in the right order that I want them. Okay, so write that down, underline it circle it and highlight it if you want to have control over the order that your uh, fields come into your form. Okay. And all of this applies for the, e the email marketing form. The contact form is going to be a little bit different, but the email marketing form is controlled completely by how you set it up in mailing boss. All right. Everybody got that? Okay. Any questions about that? Because that's a tricky thing to learn if you don't know it already. All right, let's go in and share screen again. So now this is actually ready for me to have a subscriber sign up and they'll be sent into my mailing list, but they won't be sent anywhere after they fill out the form. So we need to decide where do we want to send them to after they fill out the form. So typically what you'll do is send them to an email confirmation page. And that email confirmation page, because it's a double opt-in, will say, don't forget to uh, check your email, click confirm, and then welcome to the list. Okay, so you would send them to an email confirmation page. And this is a brand new site, so let's go ahead and create an email confirmation page. So I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to um, go to my page, and I'll click add a page. And I'm just going to pull in a blank page, just like this. And I'll call this uh, email confirmation and click confirm. 
And then I need to decide where do I want them to go once they click the confirm on their email. So I want them to go to a thank you page. That's really simple. So I'll do a blank page again and create a thank you page. So I've created two pages to handle where I want my people to go when they fill out a form. So that's a lot to do is adding two pages. So I'm going to click save because save is your friend for sure. So you want to continuously save as you go. And now I'm going to go into the email confirmation page. And I'm just going to put a label on there now. You guys are seeing not a pretty one, but you're seeing one that is very, very simple. So you can see everything that I'm doing. So this one is email confirmation page. There you go. And we'll center it. Perfect. And then the other one that we created was the thank you page. So I'm going to go in there. Then I'm going to create a thank you page. There we go. Perfect. <coughs> all right, so now we've got all of our pages labeled and I can go back to the main page. And there's my trusty little opt-in form. And we've already set it up to connect to the mailing boss list. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set up the uh, pages that will show once, uh, once I sign up. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to change URL. This is where we're gonna set the pages it goes to after the form is filled out. So I'm gonna click that. And this one's really important to understand, and this was a hard one for me to figure out. But if you've got a double opt-in list, and you should, all of your lists should be double opt-in if at all possible. Um, so they'll be pending subscribe when they fill out the opt-in form. So where do we send them when we're pending subscribe? We're gonna send them to the email confirmation page. So I'm gonna click page, and then I'm gonna click email confirmation page and okay. Then once they open the email and they click uh, confirm, where do we want them to go? And that one would be the subscription confirmed page, and it would be the thank you page. We want them to go to thank you. So I'm gonna click page, and then thank you page and okay. Now the last one is unsubscribe. You can create an unsubscribe page and have them sent to an unsubscribe page, click unsubscribe. Um, we won't do that because that's a, just an extra step. Um, well, you know what, let's do it. Let's actually do it. I'm gonna click confirm and confirm again. And I'm gonna click save because I've done quite a few things. So I wanna save what I've got. And now let's do another page. I don't think I've done a new, unconfirmed page in here. So we'll add a page, it'll be blank, and unconfirm page. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And then I'm gonna add the text there to identify that page, because remember this is just a skeleton of a website, we're not making it pretty. There we go, fabulous. And I'll click save to save that page. Anytime we add a page, we want to save as fast as we can because there's certain things you cannot do if you haven't saved your page. So now I'm going to go back to my home page where my form is at. And I'm going to right click and go to change URL again. And right here under unsubscribe confirmation, I'm going to click no action and I'm going to choose that unsubscribe page. Right there. And then confirm. So now we've got every single page we need. I'm going to click save and then save again. And now we get the fun of actually trying to test this out to see if it works. So before I can test it out, I have to publish to make sure that um, to make sure that it works. So I'm going to go in here to my dashboard and I'm going to find that website. So I'm going to go to my site. <coughs> and there it is, email training boot camp one. And I'm going to click publish this button right here. I want you to notice it's gray right now. If I click publish and then click OK, it's going to go through a lot of stuff in the background, making this website available to the Internet so that anybody can find it with the uh, link. And then it changes email training boot camp one to blue, which means that's a clickable link. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And there's my live page. So I'm going to drop this into the class 
and into chat. And you guys are more than welcome to go ahead and uh, test it out to see if it actually works. I'm going to test it out. and We're going to see if we get anything in there. So you can use a fake email for now. Um, and it'll, it should send you right to the email confirmation page. So I'm going to say I'm Shelly. And I'll do um, Shelly Shelly one. One. At builderalviva.com. Perfect. If I click get your free stuff today, and there's the email confirmation page. So the next step that I would have to do is check that email and make sure that I got the email confirmation uh, message and then click confirm to actually confirm it. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a live email. Everything seems like it's working right now. So I'm going to go to Shelly at builderalviva. Let's do Shelly. No, we'll do test one at join us at everest.com that's fabulous so i'm going to click get your free stuff today so there i am on the email confirmation page i'm going to open up my email let me find it here email and join us at everest and excuse me shelly uh-huh uh, are you sharing the screen while you do this or are you just going through it oh gosh i'm sorry i think i forgot to share Okay. You you. Sorry, you guys. I'm just humming right along. <laughs> I was wondering if it was my, if my system or not. Thank oh, you. No, so sorry. Let me show you what I did was I just added an email confirmation page and it's just a regular blank page like I did before. So now I've got the home page that has the opt-in form. I've got email confirmation, a thank you page and an unconfirmed page. And, uh, and I'm just filling out this one on the live published version. And we're going to use a real email so we can see if we get that um, email confirmation. And then I'm going to click inside there. So let me um, go ahead and do this test. Oops. Test one. At join us at everest.com. And we'll see if that goes in. Yay. So there's test one, and there's my confirmation email already. It's actually arrived. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click it. It says it's from Christy Lynn Turner. And if you'll notice, um, on the email, it's really little. You can barely see it, but it's actually using not the email that I told it to use. Um, it's using at mailer-mailingboss.net. Um, it's not, not what I told it to use. So let me explain to you why it's not using the domain that I told it not that I told it to use. It's because that domain I, I do not have verified and connected to that account. So that's why it's not going to be using it because it's not connected to that account. So it, it does a default email from email for you. But for you guys, you want to definitely point your domain towards Builderall and then verify that that domain in Mailing Boss so that you can use that email that domain as your uh, personal uh, proper email for your business, okay? So that's why that email looks really weird. Brad, okay. do you have a question? Just, just so you know, it did work, but it dropped into spam because it's a, a new email, so, but Absolutely. the links did work. Yep, good deal. So any other questions or comments, you guys? Davida, you got a question or a comment? Yeah, I have one, and it, it kind of pertains to this, but, and I don't think that anyone else knew because I didn't, but when, because I used the money making funnel, it came back as a test. Mm -hmm. And I know you said that's, that's someone that gets the seven day trial. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's exactly it. If they have that identifier, when you look up your leads and it says test, that means they're in the seven day free trial. That means it's okay. time for you to contact them and find out if they want to upgrade. Okay, now, okay, now, another thing. Um, if I want to take someone and delete them off of there, because I had done a test and got myself on there, how do I delete it? Uh, you don't, you cannot delete them off your lead list. Okay. You can delete them in Mailing Boss, but on your lead list, they'll be there until the system purges them. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Let me go ahead and share my screen again. And you see, I've got the subscribe confirmation email and this one will absolutely go into spam because I'm using that, um, that, 
that email that mailing boss gave me. So um, it will go into spam every time for that one. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But um, once you connect your own domain, you can start building up your reputation and that email will get into the inbox. You just gotta keep building your reputation. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on this link right here and make sure that when I click it, I go to the thank you page. So let's go ahead and click. And now I've gone to the thank you page, which, which is exactly where I'm supposed to go. So now that I've gone to the thank you page, what should happen next is the email should be triggered. And those emails are two minutes apart. So if I go in here and click refresh, we may or may not see the first one come in. It, it'll take a few minutes. But uh, the first one is automatically sent into the queue. So because it's set at zero minutes. So it is queued up and it's ready to go. And we may get it quickly <laughs> or we may not, depending on how that queue is. So if I click refresh, it's not there yet. So we'll come back and check this in a few minutes and see if it's actually there. So I'm going to go ahead and come back here, uh, actually go back into mailing boss. And uh, now that we've actually uh, filled it out, let's take a look at this list. So I'm going to go to the, the front page right here. There's my list right there. And I'm going to go ahead and click subscribers because I want to see the subscribers for only that list. So when I click it, I can actually see that I have six subscribers now. Here they are. Hello. Hold on a second. Let me catch my, let me mute, 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 mute. Okay, got it, got it. All right, so I'll share screen again. So these are my subscribers. So I've got um, these emails that have jumped in to subscribe. I've got their first names. And I want you to notice that I've got one, two, three confirmed and then one, two, three as unconfirmed. So those are people that have to go back in and actually um, click that uh, link to be able to confirm their email address. Um, and then they'll end up on the thank you page. Now this is a great way to deliver like a simple ebook or a report or an infographic or something like that. Um, you can build a list really quickly by putting a opt-in form page together, sending them to the email confirmation page, and then sending them to the Thank you page once they confirm and then you can give them that ebook that you said you would give them now um, right here we've got uh, Judy who's confirmed so what I'll do is actually click um, overview and I'll take a look at Judy uh, or sorry at uh, whoever I'm looking at I can't remember but um, it says her lead score right here it has the number of lists that she's a member of how many campaigns she's opened how many links she's clicked and of course, she has no tags right now because we haven't been working in tags. So I'm going to go back here and we'll take a look at Shelly. And here's another thing I want to look at is that was the overview. I want to look at how many emails or what emails I've sent out to this person. So I'm going to look at Shelly and see what email she got. So I'm going to click that. And what it says is I've got from Shelly's awesome list sequence number one, I got email five cents, email four cents email two sent, email one sent. I have no idea where three happened, but um, it looks like they're all queued to go. So they're all queued to go and ready to go. So let's see if, um, let's see if Judy did the same thing. So we'll take a look at Judy and we'll go to the email. And Judy got one, two, four, five, and six. So three is wigging out somewhere. So we have to take a look at three. So let's see what's happening with our number three. So I'm gonna go to campaigns and email sequences. And there's my email sequence right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to manage my campaigns. So there's all my uh, campaigns right there. And it looks like I've got email one, two, and I don't have a three, <laughs> four, five, six. So it just looks like I don't have a three. Apparently I lost it somewhere or I skipped or something like that, but I don't have a three. Um, so that's really weird, but that's why a three is not going out. Um, so that's how you can check, right? And it's so funny, you guys, because that's, this is not an uncommon thing to do. People will call and they'll say, oh my gosh, I, I got this email list done, but the email three never seems to send out. And it's up to you to, to get in there and figure out why. And I've given you a lot of tools to teach you how to bounce between email sequences and email lists and looking to see what sent and what didn't. That data that you just looked at, where you look at the information on the subscriber, and then you look at the emails that were sent, 
that will tell you a lot right there on what's being sent and how, how fast they're being sent, all that kind of stuff. So make sure that you're really looking deep and deep down and dirty to try to figure out why, if your emails aren't going out, why they're going out. The number one reason is definitely they're not activated. The number two reason is that they think they're connected to the right list, but they're not connected to the right list. So you have to go in and look at your sequence and make sure your sequence is connected to the right list that you want to send to. So that's another really common mistake. And uh, and then you want to just make sure that the emails are there. Because like you just saw, I don't have an email number three, even though I could have swore I made an email number three. Okay. So let's go ahead and go back. And we'll just to let again. you know, Shelly, I got every single one of your emails. Woohoo! Yay! That's fantastic. So let's check and see if um, if we got it on our test user yet. So I'm going to go into their email. And uh, yeah, here it is. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five. We are so awesome sometimes. I just can't stand it. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and open a couple of them. So there, open that one and, and read it. And I'll open that one and read it. And uh, I'll open this one and read it. So that's going to change the e the stats, the analytics, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to go into Mailing Boss. And I'm going to go into my campaigns and uh, sequence. There we go. So I'm in that email sequence. And I'm just going to go to um, sequence campaign report right here. That takes me straight to my campaign. And now you can see that each individual email now has got um, how many have been sent. And then it will be updating with how many opens I got. In fact, let me refresh and see if it'll refresh it now. It may take a while for that one as far as open. And then you can see the numbers down here where I've got six subscribers, um, three confirmed, and uh, three unconfirmed subscribers. So it's starting to keep track of what's happening with my emails right now. Um, I'm going to go back. Two campaigns. So I'm going to go to email sequence, and then I'm going to go to um, manage campaigns, and then right here I can look at the stats per email. So I can go into click this one right here, and we can see that 100% of the emails have been sent. Three have been processed. Three were successful. 100% success rate. So out of those three, all of them delivered, um, and you can see how it's starting to collect some of those uh, analytics. So you can really start digging in into what is happening with your email list. What the most important ones are, how many emails were sent, how many were open, and what's the click-through rate, um, which means if you sent 100 of them and three of them opened, that would be a 3% click rate. Um, you, that's a good rate. 3% is a really good rate, actually. It's very average. So if you can get anywhere from 0 to 10, you're doing super good not zero, three to 10 is super good. If you get an open rate of better than 10%, you are rocking it. Um, and usually 10% is, uh, that's because there's a lot of personality and flair in those emails and people want to open those emails. I'll tell you someone who does a fantastic job with emails and I open them almost every time. And that is uh, Pat Flynn because he does believe in that, that idea of value, value, sell, value, value, sell, right? Every time you open an email with Pat Flynn, you're going to get some kind of value in there where he's teaching you something or showing you something or sharing something. And I can't wait when I get, when I see his emails, he, he's one that I will open every time because I know he's got some good stuff in there. Um, and he sells me stuff and I bought stuff, but I love the way he delivers. It's that, that uh, value, value, share or value, value, promote, value, value, promote, value, value, promote. He definitely believes in that. If you don't know who Pat, Pat Flynn is, he does the uh, Passive Income Podcast. I think that's the name of it. Passive Income, Passive Income Podcast, something like that. But um, he does a, a radio show every every day, actually. And then he does a podcast once a week. And he also has a video channel. And he talks about the many different ways that you can experience success online, especially doing the podcast, but many other ways as well. He's actually really good. So look him up and see if you can learn from him too. Uh, Dominic, you have a question? I was just going to ask you if you drop a link to it so we can check it out. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can find it really quick. Let me share my screen and I'll show you where it's at. I get, I get emails from him also. 
Yeah. And do you like him as much as I like him? Well, you know, I, I, I sort of got on his list because he was uh, do, doing some training about podcasts. It's like, look, I've been podcasting longer than he has. <laughs> yeah, but he's but he's really good. I mean, yeah. you've got to give him props because he's actually really good at what he does. So this is Pat Flynn here, and uh, it's a smart passive income. I, that's the part I didn't remember. But um, smartpassiveincome.com, and I'll go ahead and copy that into the uh, – share the chat area but he has all it's kinds done. of information great he's got all kinds of information for you he's fabulous absolutely fabulous and uh what's great about pat and the way i the way i just thought he does everything so well he's so authentic and i love the way he says it and i want you to listen to me carefully so listen to me now and like hear me later um he puts all of his content online all of it all of it for free but he also sells his content. It's almost the exact same content that he's put online. But the way he explains it is people can either come and see my content for free and they have to wait till I put the content out or they have to find it and search for it, or they can pay a little bit of money and get all of my content organized together. So it's funny how people say, I, I don't want to put my good stuff out there. Pat Flynn actually teaches, put your good stuff out there because people are lazy. They don't want to try to look for it and find it and, and stuff like that. So you can still make products out of stuff that you put out there free, which is amazing. That was an epiphany to me. So I, can, I think it was fabulous. I can tell you this much. I'm on Quora and you would be surprised how yes. many people will sit there and ask questions that they want answers to that they don't, that they can just as easily search for and find themselves. Oh yeah. I get that all the time. That, that's uh, yeah. That, those, I guess there are some humans that are just inherently lazy and, uh, and they haven't been taught that, that love of learning, right? I've got, I've actually got the love of learning. If you tell me something and I don't know about it, I'm Googling it and I'm going to Google it fast and I'm going to be the next expert on it. Um, because I want to know. And just recently my dad was, uh, diagnosed with emphysema and, uh, and I don't know a whole lot about emphysema, just a little bit. So I went in and jumped on Google and found out more about it. Because my dad is the type that he's not going to go do that. Um, or he'll look it up on the internet and he'll do the, you know, the sub subheadings of the internet where you don't click. You just look at it. It's got a little blurb. He'll go on the blurbs and not click on it and find out more information, which those blurbs are not exactly always correct. They're just a smidgen from that website. So, um, you know, I've called him since he's been diagnosed and talked to him about emphysema. But you have to kind of be that way. You have to have a love of learning um, so that you can have that drive to um, maybe yeah. you can get an answer from somebody. But I think you should still try to investigate it as well on your own so you can own that information yourself. If somebody well, tells you it's not, there. That's, what, that's, that's how I sell it. Anyway, what I want emphysema is actually a problem with breathing from smoking too much. Yep, that's right. That's exactly it. And he's actually quit over 20 years ago, but... It damaged his lungs enough that as an older uh, older person now, he's having problems with it. So hopefully they'll be able to treat him. It's I don't think it's any anything terribly bad. It is progressive, but um, it's not terribly bad right now. So he's able to handle it. But they'll keep working with him. But um, the reality is that you guys as entrepreneurs, you're in an interesting position because you are searching for answers every day to run your business. And it is easy sometimes to just ask somebody or maybe get caught in that loop of paying this guru, that guru, and that guru to help you. And you kind of, my experience in that is I'm, I always get the same thing is what do you want? What do you want to do? What do you, instead of giving me real answers of what I need to do. So I learned in this process that you need to take the bull by the horns and just do it. Just figure out something to do and just do it. Because to me, there is no clear answer. If you uh, follow Tony Robbins or Pat Flynn or, you know, any of the other big gurus out there, uh, Grant Cardone, Frank Card, it's good information. It's great information. But I don't think I can be a, a Frank Card. I don't think I can be a Pat Flynn. But I, I'd probably be closer to Pat Flynn than anybody I know, actually. But um, I'd probably be close to him, but I wouldn't be Pat Flynn. And there's no way I can be Tony Robbins. His hands are bigger than my whole body. Um, so... <laughs> You, you have to learn a bit from them and then um, do it yourself and figure your own way of doing it because you just can't you can't mimic those people. You can 
copy some of the things that they do, but you, you're going to do it yourself. You're going to be yourself. Um, well, and in email, it's really important that you be yourself, that you start sending out those emails to your clients. And again, value, value, and then offer. Value, value, and then offer and create that no like, and trust factor. Uh, it's, also, yeah, it's also a personality that it, it's a very outgoing personality. And, and they just, you know, it really takes that to be that dynamic. Yeah, I'm positive. I'm not going to be the next Gary Vee. Positive. I just can't swear like he does. <laughs> unless, unless. My children take me off. If my children take me off bad enough, I might let some fly. But um, other than that, I just can't quite swear that much. But um, let me go ahead and share my screen and keep going. But let me uh, jump into mailing boss. There we go. And so you guys see that there's some great analytics that you can look at. So now let's go back into our HTML editor. And we've got our uh, the, the email marketing form. That's what this one is right here. And I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So we can look at the uh, contact form, which is the second way we can collect information off of Mailbox. So I'm going to click plus right here. And I'm going to go to the bottom. And right here is where I have contact forms. So I'm going to click on that. And again, we've got a ton of different contact forms that we can choose from. And I'm just going to click any old contact form. Um, I'll click this one right here. Now, remember, you can at any point change the way this contact form looks or the way your email marketing form looks. You can right click and go to appearance and you can change just about anything you want to about this form. It just takes too long for this training. So we're not going to do that. But we're going to configure this contact form so that it sends information straight to mailing boss. So to do that, I'm going to right click on the form and I'm going to go to configure. And I've got two choices. I can choose on this side right here, which is configured receive email response, or right here where I can do a default. Let me tell you what the difference is between the two. This first one sends you an email of the results directly to the email that you provide. So they fill out this form, and when they fill out the form, it forwards you an email with the information. Okay, so that does not send it in the mailing box. It sends it into your email. So if you want to get a contact form, and then have all the results sent to your email right away, and then you process it some other way, um, you can do that right here, okay? Because it's gonna send straight to your email. But if you want it to go into Mailing Boss, you're gonna have to click this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this one, and I'm gonna edit. And now I have an action and a method. The action is a URL destination. So I have to find a URL or a website type address that I, that I can put in that field that will send this information to Mailing Boss. So the way I do that is I go back to Mailing Boss and I'm gonna go back to my main dashboard and there's my list right there. And right here, it has subscription URL. That right there. So I'm gonna click copy link. And so that link has been copied. Now I'm gonna go back here to the HTML editor and I'm going to paste it into action. And this is the exact URL that I need to use for this data to go straight into mailing box. And then the method is uh, post or get. We're going to choose post because what we're doing is posting this data into the database. Get means we could uh, do something a little bit different. But for, for this purpose, we're getting it into the database. So we're going to click post. And then I'm going to click confirm. And now this is actually ready and all set up to uh, send straight into Mailing Boss. So I'm going to save my changes. And again, if I want to make some changes here, I can do configure. I can work on my elements. I can change the button. I can go to appearance. And then all of these other ones down here, I can do some animation, which you don't want to animate an off the box. Um, I can show this box on all pages. There's a lot of things I can do for sure. But I'm going to keep it simple, and we're just going to make it a really simple form. So I'm going to go to my um, page now, and we'll go back to the home page. And I'm going to refresh to get the changes. And now let's go ahead and fill it out and see what happens. So I'm going to put in um, 
And I, I want you to notice that I've got email first and first name second. Again, I can't stand that. I really can't stand that. So I'm going to go in here to um, elements. And when I go to elements, I can click the first name and drag it up. And now it's got first name and then email and then confirm. And I'm going to save those changes. Just like that. And then I'm going to go back to that page and refresh to see if I get the changes yet. And I did. So there's first name and email. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it out. So I am Shelly. I'm going to say this is Shelly2 at builderallsteva.com. And then I'll click the button. And it's sending it to the email confirmation page, which is cool. And now I can take a look at uh, Mailing Boss and see if I got some more subscribers. So I'm going to click subscriber. And I can see I've got seven subscribers now. If I click on that, um, Shelly2 is right here. And it's going to be unconfirmed because that's not a valid email address. So I can't click the confirm button. So that is the contact form. Now, there's uh, a lot of neat things you can do with that contact form other than just sending it straight to Mailing Boss. Remember when we set up the contact form, we needed a URL, right? So I want you to think about this. If you've never played with Zapier before, Zapier has the ability to create a situation where you can get a, a URL from Zapier and send your information straight to Zapier, and it will collect the data that you're collecting in that contact form. And then from there, you can process that data by putting it in a Google spreadsheet or sending it into another platform. There's a lot of platforms on Zapier that work. So that's a really neat way by using that contact form and that URL to be able to um, collect your data outside of Family Boss, outside of Builderall, and process it however you want. It's a little bit advanced, but once you start learning uh, Zapier, it's actually really fun what you can do to process the data. So do you guys have any questions about that so far? Go ahead, Judy. Um, I don't know if I should ask this in this section, but I've got um, my web page, which is judygun.com, mm -hmm. and I had an email that was attached to do attached to it, but it was in um, Microsoft Office. Mm -hmm. Can I have that same email address, judygun.com, but get it from somewhere else, like in Builderall? Well, if it's if you've got it going to Where's your Judy Dunn got judygun.com? Is it pointed to Builderall? Yeah, yeah. Then you should be able to get email in it. Okay. Because I don't know what happened to the email. That I've had it for ages, but they're all disappeared. I can't find them in yeah, the Microsoft Office anymore. Yeah, that's because when you point the domain towards Builderall, those records are no longer pointed towards your other hosting that you had the email on. It's oh. all pointed towards Builderall. So it's waiting. I have to set up the email. Set then. up the email, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Thanks. Absolutely. You're welcome. So let's jump in and take a look next at um, another thing you can do with contact forms. And this is outside of Mailing Boss, but I want to go ahead and set it up for you so you can see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. And I'm going to put in another contact form. So there we go. And we'll just choose that same one because it was – really easy to pull in. And here I'm going to right click it. I'm going to go to configure. And this time I'm going to go over to this side, which is configure received email responses. So this time I'm going to set it up so it sends me an email and bypasses mailing boss. So I'm going to click edit. And I'm going to put that I want all the results sent to test one at join us at everest.com. And the subject line is testing for email and uh, and it says choose a list of coupons we don't have to do that action taken after they subscribe we can say that they're going to go to the email confirmation page after they subscribe just like that and then automatic message we can send them an automated message i'll just leave it blank for now and i'll click confirm and then right here the success message i'm going to put you have succeeded in sending us your information and then confirm. And so now that's actually ready to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and close that window and click save and save again, because save is my friend. And notice that um, my fields went whoppy dog again, email went to the top and, and first thing went to the bottom. So I'm gonna go to elements and flip them again. 
and confirm and then save again because I really, really like first name first. And I'm going to go to the live page and we'll see if we get an email sent. So I'm going to refresh it to get the new changes. And then let's go Shelly. And then Shelly23 at uh, builderalviva.com. And I'm going to hit enter. And you see that I've got, you have succeeded in sending us your information. So I'll click close. And then the email confirmation page. Now I need to go ahead and uh, check my email, right? Not mailing boss. Shelly3 Shelly should be showing up in my email. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh. And remember, I set this as testing for email. So when I click it, there's the results right there. It tells me the F name is Shelly. The email is Shelly3 at Builderall Diva. And the site that I got this information from was christylynn.builderall.net. So you can see that um, you can bypass mailing boss altogether and have it sent to your email directly so that you can process that information however you want. Or you can actually use Zapier. And Zapier is really cool. Or you send it in by the email. It will pull all those pieces of data out. And then you can do whatever you want with the data after that. In fact, you can pull it out, put it in a Google spreadsheet, and you can put it back in the mailing boss uh, straight from Zapier. So lots of neat stuff you can do with Zapier. Okay. Um, any questions about what we've covered so far? You guys comfy so far? Yeah? Good deal. Okay, now let's talk about uh, how we can do all of this faster. Okay, so we're going to look at workflows. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to go into Mailing Boss. Let me find it here. I'm going to close this one. Whoops. Have this thing in the way all the time. Go ahead and go back up. There we go. All right. So workflows is how we can do all of this faster and simpler. So I'm going to go to the main dashboard. So I'm just going to click that white icon again. And I'm going to go over here to workflow. When I click workflow, it's going to actually pull up a grid area. And um, if I work, look in this area right here that says workflows, I do not have any listed. So I'm starting just plain Jane, um, nothing there, uh, you know, nothing at all. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to elements. And the first thing I'm going to do is name my workflow. So I'm going to name it um, email, email training for boot camp. There you go. So we've got email training for boot camp, and I'm going to click save. So it saves that list or saves that workflow. And now in the elements area, I can choose where I want to start. Do I want to start with the list? Do I want to create email campaign, a sequence? Um, do I want to send an instant message? This is actually new. Um, or do I want to add a tag? So I'm going to start with the list. And we're going to create a brand new, brand spanking new list from scratch so you guys can see it. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this over. And there's my list right there. Now, I've just created a list, but there's there's really no list yet. I have to put the information in there. So I'm going to click this little button right here and bring up the information. And it says to choose a list to configure automation. So I can choose one that already exists. Remember, I have some in there already. Or I can create a new list. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new list. We're going to call this um, email. All right, email boot camp. One, that'll be good. And I'm going to take that name and I'm going to copy it over to the display name and the description. Now for this list, I want it as a double opt-in and I want to make it as a single opt-out and then create. So I've created this list now and I did it on the fly. Let me look at your eyeballs to make sure you understand this. I did it completely on the fly which means I did not go in and change any of my from information, like from Chrissy Lynn, from Chrissy Lynn at builderalldiva.com, no reply at builderalldiva.com. I didn't change any of that, right? So it's pulling in the default information. I didn't change any information as far as the welcome email or notifications or anything like that. So I, if I want to change any of those, I have to go in and change those, okay? That is super important. That's why I took you the long way. So you know about all of that stuff that you can change before you start adding the sequence in there. Okay. 
So let's look at some of the things we can do from workflows to try to uh, try to solve some of those issues. So right here, I've got a button called Update List. I can click that, and that takes me into updating my list. So I've got my name, display name, uh, description. I can do my tags. And then right here is my advanced settings, where I can say double opt-in, single opt-in. I can set up my subscription or subscriber already exists. I can change my from, my from name, my from email, my reply to email. Um, I can create some tags. I can do the notifications area. I can do the subscriber area. And I can change the company details. So you can go in straight from this area and change most of those things that we talked about in the long way. Okay. But if you need to go in and change them, you can go either way. So I'm going to click Save Changes. And then we'll go um, back to uh, the design area. I'm going to click design to go back. And there's my list right there. And it's pulled in the name of the list. And right now it says it's got zero subscribers. I'm going to click it again. We looked at update list, which allows us to change the from stuff and the company details. Now I can go to edit list pages and email contents. These are editing the stock pages and stock emails. So I'm going to click that. There's our stock pages and our stock emails. So I can edit any one of those to put the information in there that I want. So that's another way to get into this area rather than the long way that I showed the last two days. I'm going to click design again. And I'll go back to my subscriber list and click this little button again. And I've got um, create and edit list fields. So when I click that, that goes into the fields that I've created where I can edit the fields that I have and either add to or delete from actually um, any of those fields. And if you notice, I've only got the email field. When you go through this way, it automatically puts the email field in. But if you want first name, you have to add it. So I always have to go in and add the first name when I use the uh, workflow. So I'm going to click Add Text Field. And I'm going to call it first name. And then the tag is F name. And is it required? Yes. Is it visible? Yes. And now we'll do the sort order. The sort order will be one and email will be number two. There we go. And I've changed that. So I'm going to click save changes. And now I'll go back to design. And now basically using the, that information that I can find by clicking that, I can go to update list. Edit list pages and email content. So those are stock pages, stock emails, and then editing my fields. Those are all the main things that I need to go in and make sure they're set up before I add the email sequence. Now, why do I tell you that? Why am I telling you that you need to do all of that before you set up the email sequence? Why is that important to do before? Go ahead, Dominic. Because if you change it after, the sequence is still going to have the default information. That's exactly it. That's a big thing to understand is your default information is in there. If you don't go in and change like your from email address, your reply to email address, your from name, if you don't go in and change the company name on that subscriber list, then it's just going to pull the default information every time. And I can tell you from what I've already experienced with my team doing uh, – doing solo ads and working with them to get emails out that we just didn't know this at the time. And the emails were sending out with really wacky email addresses. And we figured out that we had to go to every single email and change it. Um, it was crazy, crazy. So that's a big, big lesson to learn. Um, tech it in the back of your head for sure. So you can go back to it later and implement um, effectively. But um, let's go ahead and, and oh, Dominic, you got, you got something in? Real, real quick and it's really related. So um, when you create these workflows, are, is there any way of duplicating a workflow? I don't think there's a way to duplicate a workflow yet. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Not yet, not yet, not yet. All right, so I'm gonna click uh, share my screen again. Ta -da. And so we know what all we have to do with the list right here. And, uh, and then for the next thing that we need to do, we wanna add uh, a sequence onto this list. So there's some green arrows and some uh, a red X. So if I click the green arrow, that means what happens with this list 
when um, when someone goes on the list? Do we want to unsubscribe a user from another list? Do we want to insert a tag value? Do we want to copy a user? Do we want to set up an autoresponder email, like a single email? Do we want to set up an auto or sorry email sequence? Or do we want to do an autoresponder instant message? So for us, the way we're doing this is we're going to do a sequence. So I'm going to click sequence. And then it's going to ask, do you want a sequence that already exists? Or do you want to create a new sequence? Well, I'm going to create a new sequence. And it wants to know the name of it. So I'm going to call this uh, ET for BC. So email training for boot camp. Sequence number one. And then um, it asks what list do you want it to be a part of? So it's a part of that list. Um, it's to ask, do you want to send to only um, future subscribers or um, current and future subscribers? I'll send to future. And then it asks you, how many messages do you want? Do you want five messages? Do you want seven messages? Do you want 10 messages? Do you want 100 messages? We'll just keep this to five. So I'm going to type in the number five. And then I'm going to click create. And what it does in the background, I'm going to click the OK button. What it does in the background is it, it's created five emails for me. So one, two, three, four, five. All right. And they're all by default paused. And they all have, um, I think, uh, there's one day and two days and three days and four days and five days. So it puts automatic days in there, too. OK, so let's go back to this screen right here and we'll see what what we can do with this information. So right here, the options are sequence information. So if I click that button, it's going to take me to the email sequence information that I put in. So there's the name, the list that it's attached to. If I wanted to choose a segment, I could, but we're going to just choose that as nothing. And then, of course, future and uh, current subscribers or just future only. So all that looks good. I'm going to click Save and Edit. And now it takes me into the all the emails and I can edit each email right here. But remember, it doesn't give me the advanced email editor. And I'm going to click done. And then it takes me to back to the workflow. OK, so that was when I clicked here and then click sequence information right here. I can click manage email templates. So I'm going to click that one. And that takes me straight to the emails. Again, in the uh, general editor, the editor light, because you've got all the emails that you can edit in the same screen. So um, you, you can edit all of them right here and click done. And when you click done, it will take you back to the workflow. So that's what all you can do with the email sequence. Now, each individual email right here, right? You can actually go into each individual email by clicking this little paper icon with the pencil on it. And then you've got a lot of options. You can uh, do the email information and filter tags. So I'm going to click that. And here's the information about that specific email. And I want you to notice that there's a lot of information here. Um, we've got the campaign name, the type. It's an autoresponder. What uh, sequence it's in. What list it's attached to. We don't have a segment. We didn't uh, mandate a lead score. And we don't have any tags. So I'm going to click Save and Next. Then we've got the from information, from email, reply to, the email tag that it's going to send to, and then the message on the email. And we've also got the advanced settings, right? The tracking and stuff like that. And once you get done with that, you can click Save and Next. And then here's where you're going to get to uh, edit the individual email. And remember, every time you're in the individual email editing, it will give you the advanced editor where you can do some advanced stuff. Um, including uh, sending a test to yourself and then also um, using the HTML editor if you want to and setting up the show plain text version. So once you're done with that, you can click Save and Next. And then that takes you to the area where you say, when do you want this to go out? After they subscribe, one day, um, send to future subscribers only. And you can do a spam check. And then you can do either Save and Activate or Activate Later. I'm going to go ahead and do save and activate. And now that that email is activated. So if you take a look at this, it's actually activated. It says active right there. So it's going to go one day after they subscribe. If you want to change the activation date, you just click here on the time. And you can choose send to future subscribers, status active, 
activate at, um, which is this is the date that you want this sequence to be able to start going out. I don't ever mess with that date. Um, and then after they subscribe, one day. Okay, so you can change any of that information there. So each individual box right here is its own email. And you can go into each one of those and configure them right here. So now let's take a look at what else we can do with the subscriber list right here. We click that green arrow. If they subscribe to this list, we can unsubscribe them from another list. We can insert a tag value. So if they get subscribed to this uh, list, we can put a sticker on them that identifies them somehow. So um, if this is the email boot camp list, maybe they have a tag that says email boot camp. So anywhere they go in mailing boss, they'll take that tag with them and we'll know that they've been a part of that list. We can copy the user to another uh, subscriber list. We can send them a single uh, email. We can send them an email sequence like we just did, we set up. And we can do an autoresponder uh, instant message. This is through the um, SMS system, I believe, and I've not tested this a lot to see if it works yet. But um, we will be able to do that from right within mailing boss, we can send text messages, which is really cool. So now on this email sequence, I've got a green arrow. I'm gonna click that one and I can add another autoresponder email into the sequence. Okay. The next thing I can do is on each individual email, I can click the green arrow and I can say, if the user opens this email, I want move the user or I can copy the user or I can change a field value I can insert a tag or I can send them a different email campaign if they open this one. Um, if they click a link and if they if I want to send them an instant message. So lots of power in that one right there. If they look at if they open that email, if they never open that email, they never open it. I can move them to another list. I can copy their them to another list. I can change a field value. I can insert a tag. I can send them a separate email campaign or I can send them an instant message. So when you click that um, X and they never open that email, let's say that if they don't open that email in two days, I wanna move them to a different list. So I'll click move. And so after two days, we'll say three, cause that's easier. And I'll choose the list that I want to um, send them to. So we'll send them to uh, Shelly's awesome list. And then I have some options here. I can update the list, uh, edit the stock pages and emails, or I can uh, edit the fields, or I can create a new list if I want to instead of sending them to one that's already there. But basically what this says is if they do not open this first email in the campaign, then I want them moved after three days to this other list because they're tire kickers. So I'll click OK. And now what's going to happen is we have this new box show up that says a, move, uh, a person's gonna be moved if they do not open this first email in three days. Okay, so that's just another way to manage your list and get the tire kickers off if they're not opening your emails. Because again, the whole idea behind email and having an email list is getting a good open rate and a good click-through rate, right? So you want them opening and you want them clicking. So you can actually set it up in the system that you can get rid of your tire kickers. If they don't open your email, get them off that list and put them on a, just a bummer list, right? And it doesn't mean you still can't send them stuff. It just means that whatever you're sending them on the list that they're on now, you know it's gonna be a bad responding list. It's not gonna be a warm list, it's a cold list. You wanna focus on getting those warm lists though, or people that are opening your emails and they're clicking on the links. When you build that kind of warm list, you're gonna have a lot of success with sending out things. So you wanna use those uh, features in BuildRall and in Mailing Boss to help you identify who are the tire kickers and who are not. Get them moved over to different lists so that they're not bothering you on that list where you want a good click-through rate and a, a good open rate, okay? Does that make sense, you guys? All right, so every time you work in workflows, what you're gonna do is when you get it set up the way you want, you're gonna always click save. That's been my that's been my tricky thing because save is down here, kind of hiding. I'm always used to save up here. So don't forget to always save your workflow so that you can go back to it later. So let me go out into the main mailing boss dashboard. So then I'm gonna show you how to get back to your workflow. So you just click workflow again and it comes up with a blank grid and I click workflows right here. And there's my workflow. I just click it and it opens it back up and then I can keep going. Um, you've got a lot of power in this workflow screen 
And, uh, and I would suggest that you kind of play with these buttons because like just getting onto this uh, subscriber list, the power in the uh, green arrow is you can unsubscribe them from a different list. You can tag them. You can copy them. So think about the ways that you can be bouncing them from one list to another so that they're getting the exact emails that you want them to get. And then the X, um, if you can have them unsubscribe a user if they get on this list. So there's a lot of neat stuff that you can do. Investigate those arrows and X's to see what you can do with each thing. Also, anytime you find something that you did that you don't want, there's that trash can right there. You just click it and it deletes the whole thing. But also remember this one <laughs> with the trash can, it doesn't give you, a, are you really, really sure? <laughs> so it's gone and, and then you might panic a little bit. So make sure before you click that trash can that you really want it to go, okay? So any questions about workflows? I think we were able to go through that faster just because we'd done the longer route first. So you knew so much about what was already there. Um, Phoenix? Hi, yes, hi everybody. Sorry I was a bit late today. It's a kind of chaotic today. Um, I have a question about the instant message. Uh, it's a bit new, so where does it go? Um, the instant message, I believe, is uh, SMS texting, but I'm not sure. I haven't tested it yet, so I have to go in and test it, but um, it, it's been there not for very long. Yeah, no, that's new. It's, I, I haven't seen it either. Um, that's why I asked. So it also means if you don't have that field in your sign-up form, then it's going to bomb your list. It's not going to work. Right. And um, they were talking the other day about the, uh, the correct uh, form for the tag, which is Cadastro Telefone. Um, yeah. yeah. But it can I, break I, your I whole workflow. To, yeah. I just have to play with it a little bit before I can give you any real direction on how to use it. Okay. Because it's still um, new. I don't think it's even been there a week or two weeks. Maybe. No, no. I just, I just saw that. I was in Mailing Boss maybe two days ago it wasn't there yeah i think it's been there maybe a week Same so I, I have a talent of getting together with the developers and saying hey i don't understand what this is can you tell me and uh and they tell me so that's really good i spent about two hours the other day with one of the developers just a few days ago um asking about very specific things in their boss including uh reaffirming some of the things that i told you because when you go doing this long enough you're like, oh, man, I sure hope I told him the right thing um, because it's been so long since you've done exactly that. So there's a couple things that I confirmed, and then there's a couple things that I straightened out, and there's a couple things that I submitted as issues. So it was a, a long session to get through all that, and, and I'm sure that poor Bruno was like, Shelly's crazy. She just keeps asking questions. <laughs> so along the line of clarifying things, so we can now – um, transfer an email sequence between people. So we, that was also sort of new. But we can't copy and transfer a workflow yet. Is that still the status? That that's Yes, that's that's correct, yes. No okay. workflow transfer, but email sequences transfer. Okay. I do yeah. have a, a question, Shelly. It's like when we, we're doing an, uh, a form. Of, in other words, when we have a template with all the work that we've done, when we finish connecting that to uh, connect the mailing boss to the template and everything, and we want to copy that template and send it, you know, transfer it with uh -huh. all the actions that we did with mailing boss also transfer with that template from the, on the opt-in form and all of that. Yes, it's supposed to. Now I haven't done it in a while, but if you create a website and you attach a subscriber list and then you have an email sequence to go with it, when you transfer that, that, that whole thing to a person, they should get everything. Okay. Will they have to go in and change any links that may be your links or will? Yes. They'll have to go in and change. Uh, they'll have to change. They may have to connect the um, mailing boss to the list again, if, especially if they make any changes to the subscriber list. And then they'll have to go in and check uh, their from email address, their to email address, make sure all of that's correct because I'm not sure if that gets changed. Um, so all of that has to be looked at. And all of this can only happen as if another person is in is in build all, but anyone yes. outside of build all, this cannot happen. That's correct. Okay. Yep, you got it. Yeah, Dominic. Yeah, we're gonna are we gonna test that spam thing? Oh yeah, let's do that. 
Yeah. Let's do that. Well, I gave you, I gave you a hundred spam words. Why don't we just throw a bunch of those in? Throw a, a bunch of those in there. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. So let me try to figure out what I'm doing here. So I want to do an email. I want to do an email and I think it's going to be a regular email. So I'll go to the other campaign. So email regular and create new and we'll call it Shelly's test with Tommy. It's going to be a regular email, no sequence. Um, we'll choose it to come out of Shelly's awesome list. No segment, no lead score, no tags and save it next. And Christy Lynn, that's perfect. Subject, um, howdy. And save it next. And here we go. Now let me find my trusty PDF. See if I've got Facebook open. We'll open with Dominic. Oops, Dominic, where'd you go? Dominic, Dominic, there we go. And see if I can find it. Oh, I hate hey, Shelly, it was a group. It was a group message with me, you. Oh, and that's right. That's one, right. Thank personally. you. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. That's that's one of my hardest things to, to tackle. Is where did I find these these there things? At? There we go. Yay me! Gold star seeker. All right, so now we'll go. Right we get all of those. Let's do the first column, I think. And then back to no loss. And we'll throw them in there. Act now. Don't hesitate. Avoid bankruptcy. Be amazed. Oh my gosh, Dad, yeah, this should throw us right into spam. So I'm going to go ahead and click the down arrow and go to save index. And let's do a spam score. <laughs> My score is a 1.6. <laughs> it doesn't really tell us a whole lot, does it? Um, let me go back and put some of that weird stuff into the subject line. So I'm going to go um, be your own boss. That's good. Could do that. Oh, I can't put it in the subject line there. I forgot. All right, so it looks like all of those are causing it to be a 1.6, which is real weird. So I still am not sure because it could be a zero is bad and a five is good. I honestly can't remember. So let me let me ask them and I'll find out. I don't honest. Here's my honest take on it. I don't think it's going to be as trustworthy as if you go into some of these other spam checkers and check. Um, and the, the very best way is to just look at that list and avoid saying things that are on that list. And I'll have more of those for you tomorrow. We'll go over um, trying to get stuff into the inbox and I'll, I'll show you more about how to work on that email and get it in the inbox, okay? So that was kind of a busted test because it didn't give you a definite answer. <laughs> but that's what this, how this goes sometimes. <laughs> All right, so any questions that we've covered so far today? Nope. Okay, so let's talk about what we've covered so far. We've covered uh, mailing boss. We covered creating a subscriber list, creating an email sequence, creating a regular email, which is just a one-time broadcast email. We've talked about going in and looking at the analytics, going in and looking at subscribers to see information about subscribers, including did they get emails or not. So remember that you can go into those subscribers and look at that information. So we then talked about uh, how to connect those forms with contact form or with a email marketing form. And then we went through the, uh, the workflows to make sure we know how to set up workflows. So tomorrow we're going to talk about uh, working on our emails and editing our emails to make sure that we've got a good subject line, um, a good body, and try to avoid those spam filters and get them into the inbox. And we'll do a couple more tips and tricks for emails that hopefully will help you out. And then the last day, um, 
let's see, is well, tomorrow's the last day. No, we've got two days. So Tuesday, we'll talk about um, some of the other tools in Build Raw. That's I always try to save the last day for covering other tools. So if somebody's new into these boot camps, they can see some of the other tools that are available other than just the one we've work, been working in the last six days. Okay. And we'll also clean up anything else that we need to show on the last day. So you guys feeling good about it? Do you feel better about mailing boss? I'll tell you, we'll need plenty of soap to clean us up. <laughs> I don't know. Jeez. Do you want this? Do you want the bar or do you want the old uh, um... <laughs> the pump? <laughs> yeah. Jerry, um, um, I had but before we had this class, I had been dabbling with work workflow and been dabbling with uh, the long way with mailing boss, and I do know that workflow is part of mailing boss. But whatever we do in the first part of the of the week that we learn, we can also do that in Mailing Boss as a shortcut. Yes, that's why I wanted to show you the long way because it's easier to understand what those links are in in the workflows if you've been the other way, right? If you never go the other way, you get really confused what they are. Um, so when you click on them, you're like, where am I at and what am I doing? So go, taking you the long way helps you to understand what all is available to do in mailing boss and then when you click those links in workflows you're like oh i remember being there with shelly i know what to do here yeah. so that was the point of going the long way is so that you could actually use the short way because um that way you'll know and you know now you have to go in and change that from uh name and that from email and that reply to email um you know now that you want to change your company information if you want it different than the default um, going through workflows, it's just not that obvious. And uh, when you kind of go back and then forward and then back and then forward from workflows, it can get really confusing. But going through the entire thing with me, I think that you have a, maybe a better picture of what else there. Yes, ma'am. And I want to thank you for that because with mailing boss, it's like looking at the motor. Mm -hmm. I mean, workflow is like looking at the motor. And if something starts messing up with the motor in workflow, I now know where to go into the engine, into side of the motor. Because yeah. I was having that problem with workflow. Workflow for me was like using previous autoresponders that I had. Mm -hmm. But when I had problems with those autoresponders, I didn't know how to go inside of it and correct it. Now, right. because you've taken us over uh, mailing boss, if I'm saying it correctly, taking us the long way of mailing boss, and then the short way with workflow, when something doesn't work according to the way I want it to work in workflow, I now know how to go inside a mailing box. That's right. And know where to go and make that correction so that it can flow in workflow like it's supposed to. That's exactly the point, Tyree. You got it exactly. Is the workflow is fabulous, but and it's so fast, but it just isn't conducive to being able to find issues. If you have an issue with the email list that's not sending, you have to be able to get in there and figure out why. And the workflow is harder to do that. So if you go, if you know how to go the long way around and start checking it and doing those little troubleshooting things, um, you'll, you'll be able to find it because you now, you guys have been in and out of that, that uh, mailing boss the long way now. So you know what all's there for sure. Um, it'll still take a little while for it to all to sink in because it's a lot. But uh, just remember those things that you've got the subscriber list, the email sequence, the email regular, which is a broadcast email. Um, and then you could go into each one of those areas and check very specific things to see why your list is not sending. Okay. Okay. Cause this is a benefit to me because I was still with it with, with mailing boss. It's a little more, it, I'm, what I can truly say is, is on top of the world compared to those other, other responders I was using. And it has more features to understand like sequence emails, regular emails and things like that. Some of the technology is a little different, but that's better. But for me, I now know I can I can go straight to workflow and and set up everything I need to set up without yeah. having to go the long way. But if something doesn't work properly in workflow the way that I need to, I know how to directly go. I know where to go and fix the problem. That's right. That's the power. That's the power you have. Um, you you now all have superpowers. So go ahead and go get your cape. It's okay. <laughs> yeah.
And, and this is really great because now you have just made us an authority of what we are, what people need to learn how to do when they want to do these things. And uh, because I hadn't seen anyone else with any other autoresponder service with a system like Workflow. So mm -hmm. this gives us even more of a reason to uh, help people by uh, connecting them to build all to have access to Workflow. I mean, Mulling. That's, right. that's right. And when we get Canvas, um, that's just going to be another kind of icing on the cake. Um, workflow is icing on the cake for mailing boss and canvas is icing on the cake for that pixel perfect builder. And that's coming sooner than we think. So, uh, it's, it's going to be great for sure. I can't wait. You guys, the, the stuff that we've got coming is absolutely fabulous. And, uh, mailing boss is just such as it's just a small piece of everything that builder all has. And it's so incredibly powerful and it's, it saddens me. When people make posts up on Facebook that say, I hate Mailing Boss um, because it's just they haven't learned Mailing Boss yet. And you guys see now that it is a complicated system. You do have to bounce around a little bit. You have to understand a little bit. So it takes a little bit of learning. But once you learn it, you've got a powerful, powerful email autoresponder in your hands and it works. It does actually work. It works beautifully. You just but have you to know how to work it. Go ahead, Davida. And uh, what I was saying is, if you've ever used Constant Contact or something, yes, you can set up you can set up sequence emails, but no one really knows what they're doing when they're doing it because they never train you on how to use their system. Right, right. That's where that's where uh, it's just another place that uh, Builderall excels because they actually pay people to teach you guys. So it's fabulous. Yeah. Because I had a web of constant contact. I had active email. I had, I done went through like five or six different emails. And a web had a basic way of teaching you. Like you can, they had uh, webinars, but they were recorded. So you really couldn't ask questions. But no one taught you. They, they put the mechanics in front of you, but they didn't teach you them how to use the mechanics or how to structure them. You taught, you put workflow in front of us. But before you put workflow in front of us, you taught us how to construct the mechanics within inside of workflow, which right. is the long way of mailing boss, and that makes a difference. Good. Well, I hope it helps you guys a lot. But tomorrow, again, we'll go over, try to make sure our emails get into the inbox instead of the spam folder. And uh, we'll do a little, bit of, a little bit of cleanup. There's a few other things I want to show you. And then, like I said, the Tuesday, we'll focus on the other tools that are available in Builderall so you can see what other things are in there and what you can use to um, to build and grow your business. So it's absolutely incredible. So any questions before I go, you guys? I just want to add there to what Tyree said. Mailing boss is included in Builderall. Think about it. It's huge, isn't it? <laughs> you yeah. know, pe people are out there and they're paying so much for that one, the, 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 the few that you said there, Tyree, I'm not going to mention their names because, you know... Uh, it's crazy when you think about it. And people are still knocking mail in Boston. How silly can people be? <laughs> they have to learn. I, we said it a couple of times during the week. People are too bloody lazy to learn. Indeed. And Davida said it earlier on that they're too lazy. And yep, that's, how, that's how we can develop ourselves. We can, if we can get these lazy people, we can, we can really... Well, I, I'm, I'm not saying any more, okay? <laughs> Thanks for I'm, Hey, I'm glad to hear you're better and uh, keep getting okay. better, by the way, okay? Thank you very and much. Thanks oh, well, a million. Gonna, Thank you. I'm going to rest the, the rest of the day. No no work, just rest. And uh, and hopefully by tomorrow, I'll be pretty close to 100%. I do have one other comment. Uh, well, two. First of all, I'm glad you're feeling better. Second of all, uh, one of the reasons why people are not, are not really diving into this because they gotten comfortable making excuses or comfortable being late. And that's, I'll say comfortable being uncomfortable. Sometimes yeah. being uncomfortable will make you lazy because you can't get out of that uncomfortability to move forward. The other yeah. thing I wanna ask you, this is not related to the training, but we mentioned it about, we mentioned a brief point about uh, podcasts. Mm -hmm. Shelly, do you know of any other courses or any other free information that teach you how to set up a podcast? Because I want to do that because I, I believe that I can set uh, learning how to do set up a podcast or doing a podcast, which is I want what I want to do. 
I feel like I can create a membership site that connects me to that. So then that gives me more power to use mailing balls, gives me more power with uh, build off. But I don't know how to set up or do a podcast. And I wanted to know if that yeah, was um, Pat Flynn, that smart passive income. He does a podcast every week. And there's another podcast he does every single day. And, uh, and it's a short one, like five minute questions with with Pat or something like that. Hmm. And then the long one, that's like an hour for the week. And uh, he has several courses on how to do podcasting. And it's like I said, he always puts his stuff out there for free, always. And then he's got a package content that if you don't want to try to find it and look for it in all of his blog stuff, you can pay for it. I don't know how much his podcasting uh, course is. I've um, actually, I've actually got a course on Skillshare on how to do podcasting. And I, I yesterday I did a, my podcast was actually on once you get, you have subscribers, how to develop a relationship with them. And I put that up in the, in the boot camp, in the, in the, uh, the group. And oh, they, that podcast will let me develop a relationship with Tyree. And many boss will let me stay connected to them. That's what I want. Yeah. Tyree, 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 Tyree. I want to talk to you later on after this. I have a, I'm, I have an ongoing thing. Right, I'll give you I'll give you a shout straight after this, and I'll okay. show you what I've been doing. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. All right, guys. So check it out. Uh, Davida's got a podcast and information on Skillshare, and then it's old Mark school Davida. now, but they do work. <laughs> I did a podcast for a while, and I did it with uh oh gosh uh, uh I downloaded a program that's free. That's an audio file, an uh, audio program. What's the free audio program that you can use? Do you guys do you guys know the free audio program? Are you talking about SoundCloud? No, it's not SoundCloud. It's where you can edit your there's audio. Spreaker, there's Spreaker, which is one that's an app that you can put on your phone, and anyone who has a podcast, they can link to it, and then all you have to do is go into search, find it, and save it to favorites, and then you can listen to it at any time. No, no, that, that's not this one either. It's a really sophisticated program you can download that helps you do your audio in layers so that you can't, but I can't think of the name of it. It's actually really good. <laughs> I can't think of the name of it. But if I think of the name of it, I'll try to tell you guys tomorrow. Um, it's usually right there in the front, but I think with all this medication, it, my, my brain's just not quite working exactly correctly. <laughs> so anyway, I'll try to show Thank that you. tomorrow. One of you guys say, Shelly, do you remember what that, that audio program is? And it'll probably pop right in. Thank okay. you, Shelly. Shelly is awesome. <laughs> Shelly, you want to mention anything about the call for tomorrow? Oh, yeah. The, the call for tomorrow will be um, same bat time, same bat channel. And then uh, we'll go in Monday and Tuesday at the same exact time, same exact time. I'll just extend it a couple days. And, uh, and it will uh, allow us to go into the, the meeting again. So we should I, be. I'm at the affiliate call tomorrow morning. Yeah, the, the uh, affiliate call is at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. We meet at 12 Eastern time. That affiliate call is probably going to bump right up to um, th this one because uh, we're covering a lot of stuff tomorrow, especially on compensation. And you definitely do not want to miss it um, because people are asking a bunch of questions now. And really the only answer we can give them is be on the Monday call, right? So be on the Monday call. Make sure you're paying really close attention to what he's saying. Um, record it if you want to so you can go back and take a look later. And uh, that will be live streaming in the weekly webinar area. And I'll do my best to get it back up and get the replay in there as soon as it's done. But it'll have to... I'll probably have to delay a couple hours because I'm going to be right with you guys afterwards. So um, I'll get the replay up in the weekly webinar probably a couple hours after the meeting and you can watch it in your dashboard. So um, that's good. That's right? what happened to Sorry, just a quick... Oh, we got a couple of people. Phoenix, go ahead and then I'll get to the next person. Sorry, I just want to do a quick uh, time check question with you. It's huh? over here now, it's 10 to 7 in the evening and with you it is? Um, 10 to 1 p.m. Okay, because things have changed and it's... Thank you yeah, for that. Yeah, that daylight savings time thing kind of 
changes everything a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just. <laughs> So, what time, is the, what time you, is the meeting? It will be at uh, 12 o'clock Eastern time. It's actually 11 for me because I'm central. So um, 12 o'clock Eastern time. That's lunchtime, 12 o'clock. Oh, um, oh, that's our meeting. The, the weekly meeting for the for Bill Draw is going to be at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Is that the same one that's viewed on on YouTube on Mondays or separate? Yeah, let me let me show you guys so you, so you know exactly where to find it. If you go to a uh, Build Raw and you go to Build Raw Business and you go down to Event Calendar, so I'm just going to click Event Calendar. When you do that, it's going to come up within a page that has all the events on it. Hopefully, it's loading. There we go. And we've got what is it? April now. So It'll April the. Yeah, April the April first, Fools. Right there. That's the business meeting I'm telling you about. It doesn't have the boot camp on it because we had to push the boot camp out because of the two days that I missed. So um, we have boot camp on April 1st and April 2nd as well. But you can see the Build Raw business meeting and the location is on your dashboard. So on your dashboard tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock uh, Eastern time, you'll click here to go to weekly webinar. And right here is where that will replay. Okay, so right there is where it will replay. Not sure why that's showing like that, but okay. Everybody got it? Yeah, and this is the same one they can look at on YouTube at uh, 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, usually it goes live to YouTube as well. And because that's that's how we're doing it, is it's Zoom to YouTube to Builder All. We're actually using the Builder All platform. The webinar platform is just iframed into the webinar. Um, so it's literally going Zoom to YouTube and then into the webinar platform for Build Raw. So that's how you're able to see it live on that page or in a broadcast room. That is so groovy. It is really cool. Um, there's lots more coming to that webinar thing. I'm super excited about it. I can't keep up with all the changes. There's so many. <laughs> Kelly, quick uh -huh. question. So they're using Zoom. Oh, I'm sorry. Got a. <laughs> Let's go They're coming to get that. you. And they are actually. Don't don't <laughs> joke. <laughs> so, so when you're using that webinar tool, you are sending it from Builderall into YouTube, or are you doing? No, nope, it's going from Zoom mm -hmm. through to to YouTube, and it's streaming live to YouTube from Zoom, and then from YouTube, we got the channel information and sent it live to the page in weekly webinar in the dashboard. So, so it's going Zoom to YouTube to the Builderall webinar platform. So you can't host a webinar with the Builderall platform? You can, you can, but the problem is that you can't have multiple speakers, although we're working on it and getting closer, and then you can't flip-flop between multiple speakers in your desktop, which we're working on that, we're really close. So okay. um, because of those two things, right now the best way to do it is Zoom, and then go YouTube and then iframe it in. But at some point, we're not going to have to do that anymore. We're already able to stream live to YouTube. We can stream live to Facebook. Um, or we could just record it and do not stream it anywhere. We can just record it and make it available for later webinars. Um, all of that's coming. It's uh, I did a test with it a couple nights ago. And we were pulling in speakers, guest speakers and panelists. And it just delayed real bad. It was have, having some problems. So they're still working on all the all the coding to make sure it happens correctly, but it did stream live to YouTube. It just wasn't, um, wasn't, uh, clean to use. And like on my end, I couldn't see who was, uh, live and who wasn't. Um, and I couldn't see on every, everybody was like frozen in place. But when you look on YouTube, you could see everybody and no one was frozen. So it was just, there's some work they have to do to it, but man, when they get it, it's going to be fabulous because, just Zoom alone cost me a lot of money for the year to get this webinar platform like this to be able to go live to YouTube or live to Facebook. And when I can cut that completely out, that's, gosh, $55 a month times 12. That's a pretty good savings. Um, so that's fabulous. And then to be able to do everything from Builderall would be absolutely fabulous. So we're getting closer. It's a little bit closer every day. 
All right. Any other questions, comments? All right, you guys. I'm going to let you go for today. Um, have a great rest of your weekend. I'm going to rest a lot. And I will see you tomorrow on the weekly webinar and on the boot camp. And uh, just hang in there for running a little bit late because I'm sure that webinar tomorrow at 10 o'clock is going to go along with the new compensation plan. Okay? Yep. Get Karen's ready. swimming. Karen's swimming. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Good best. Oh, Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you, everybody. Hey, Tiny, I'll be on to you there in a minute. Okay. Uh, quick question. Yeah, go ahead, John. Have you got taken a chance to uh, look at that affiliate page uh, on Bill uh, Rowe? I've, I've looked at it really, really quickly, John. I have not looked at it a whole lot because I've I really have been feeling super sick. So I'll probably look at it a little bit today. But again, I'm not going to push myself too much because um, I'm on the men now and I'd like to stay on the men. But I will take a good look at it. They are changing a lot of things. Take and a look at it. <laughs> it needs help. One of, the, one of the things that I want you to do is uh, go and check where all of your advertising is and take a look at those money making funnels because they've, they've literally taken those money making funnels out that promote the money making opportunity part of Builder All. So if you've got any ads going or anything going where it's grabbing those and uh, posting those and showing those, just change your stuff up. Um, I got. I have to do that today. Actually, I have a lot of places where I have ads running, and I have to change all the all the links and everything to make sure that they're going to funnels that are still going to work. So that's what we will we'll need to be doing in the next couple couple of days to make sure that your ads are up and running like they're supposed to be. And it's going to be different. You're not going to be able to promote Build Raw as a business opportunity um, like we have in the past. And uh, it's going to be hard because even me, I'm in there with Eric and understanding what's going on. But even some of my videos, I was asking him on the, the webinar, you know, when I do, sometimes I'll do a, a post on Facebook where I'll just take a screenshot of some of my earnings. And then I'll just put something like, you can do this too. It takes time. It takes work. Um, you do have to work at it. You, it's uh, all according to, you know, your motivation and whether you want to get it done or not. Um, and that's skirting the line for sure. It is skirting the line for sure. So um, I've, and I don't like to do those posts, but every once in a while, like once every six months, I might do a post like that. But um, I, and it's because I don't like them. I don't like the money part of it. And uh, telling people things like you can make $5,000 in 2.5 seconds. No. Because I've made a lot of money, but none of it has come easy. Not a single bit of it has come easy. And I've always worked my tail end off to get it. And when somebody represents that as easy, all you have to do is do one, two, three. Um, it frustrates me because I know different. You, you do have to do one, two, three, but then it's four, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Right? You got to keep pushing through. So, three clicks uh, and you're going to be a millionaire. You know. Yeah, Urgh. absolutely. Urgh. And that, that whole passive income is a myth. You, there's not really good ways to make <coughs> truly passive income where you're not working. And anybody that you look, look at in any kind of marketing situation, whether online or offline, they're working their tails off. It's not passive. But um, there's a lot of people that fall for that. So my thing is to not promote the money. But every once in a while, I do want to show people that you can make money. Right? You can make money. So I will pull that out of my repertoire and probably will never post another post like that again um, because I don't want to um, do that to build raw for sure. Um, I did ask about my videos where I show how to make money with build raw, but those are videos that show how to make money with build raw using the tools. So I think okay. that one is fine. And I definitely don't talk about like how much money you can make. I just say you can go to Fiverr and do this. You can go to Upwork and do this freelancer, do this. Yep. Um, so all of those are just methods that you can make money with builder all using the tools. So I'm sure those are fine, but we need to definitely work on rethinking how we're advertising, uh, how we're advertising the company and not focus on the business opportunity until we actually get them into a paid plan. And then yeah. once they're in as a paid plan, then as, offer them. you know that you could get an affiliate link and offer this yourself. Um, then it, then I think it will, uh, I think it'll be great. Uh, I think what we're going to see on the front end is a dip in sales for sure. Because I know in my team, there's a lot of people that are struggling and they're going to look at it and say, wait, I'm going to drop my account because I have zero people in there and I'm going to sign up for free 
and start working this free first. And then I'll sign up if I get some people in. So I think we're going to see a drop in the beginning. And then as people come in, because we're getting bigger and bigger, they will actually see the numbers go up again. But I think the initial no. result is going to be a drop. Maybe, maybe, but but the, the the thing about it is, if if people are actually using the product, this they, to me, I've been using it for the last year and a half, right? Mm -hmm. And I haven't been selling it, so I'm not I'm not hyping anything up. I the the way I am taking it on board now is going to be I have been using the tools, everybody, mm -hmm. right? And this is this, this is that, this is the other. You can do this, you can do that. Think of all the money that I've saved, saved, not made, saved. Right. Sure. That's true. Over the last year and a half. And that's, that's the big, that's the biggie that, 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 that I find, you know? So well, I think, um, I think you're going to see a lot of people that came in for the business opportunity though. Yeah. But and, they're the hypey, they're the hypey people right. though. Shelley. They're that, the ones that hype it all up and you don't yeah. need them in any business and they right. ruin so it in the long run. Those are going to be the ones that are going to say, wait, I don't even have to pay for this. <clears throat> so I'm going to drop my 4990 account mm -hmm. and keep it free and then keep bringing people in. Mm -hmm. um, you're also going to see probably an, a lot of 2990s and 990s drop off because if they drop off and pay nothing, they have that affiliate link and now they're able to promote. So I do think there's going to be a drop in the very beginning because there's a lot of people that cannot afford 2990. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot for somebody that's mm -hmm. for a living paycheck to paycheck. 990, the same thing. So mm -hmm. if they can drop, not pay anything and still have that affiliate link. That's that's an opportunity for them, even though we know that's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is at least have a paid plan while you're promoting. So you can actually see the tools that you're promoting. But um, I do think there's going to be a, an immediate drop, but then it'll slowly come back up as people are really starting mm -hmm. to use the tools. When real marketers start using it properly. <clears throat> that's right. But that's just my guess. I'm definitely not a marketing specialist by any stretch of the imagination or a marketing genius at all. Um, but that is my best guess based on what I've seen of the plan so far. Um, we'll see. And I hope that even if there's a dip, I don't think it's going to be really bad. Um, but uh, Eric did say that he's going to keep the car bonus as well. So that's really big. Cause he'd announced in London that he was going to stop the car bonus and uh <laughs> he cracked me up on the meeting the other day because he said that um, I was about to boot him out of London all the way back to Orlando. <laughs> I'm like, don't do that because that's a huge carrot to dangle out to people when they're joining Builderall, especially becoming uh, an affiliate is look, if you become an affiliate and you get a hundred people, you get a $500 per month bonus. That's incredible. That's an incredible bonus. And then if you get 200, you're going to get a thousand dollars a month bonus. That is an incredible bonus. So that's a carrot you can dangle in front of them once they've joined a plan. Um, I, I think that that will be a, just a, a great thing to have. And I was really upset that he was going to take it away. But um, he, he came back and said he was going to keep it. So I was real happy about that. <laughs> but what I like, what I like about, about Builderall is it's only the two tiers. It's not uh, a multi-level marketing scenario. And that, that's what I really like about it. You know, it, may, that, it may go, I, I cannot tell you what's going to happen on Monday, but it may go to more tiers. And oh. if it does, the reality is <clears throat> that our next step, if it does, is to show them how you can have a five level payout company, commission payout company that is actually got a really good product. Um, I think that we have the opportunity to change what it looks like to be at MLM. MLM has got such a bad name over the last what, 30, 40 years. And uh, Builderall has a chance to change that around because they have a fabulous product. It's just, I've never seen anything like it. It's not like Amway, where you have to buy a bunch of crap and put it in a closet to keep your status. It's not like Avon, where you have to, if you don't reach a certain amount of sales, you only get the smaller commission. So you spend a lot of money in makeup for yourself that you don't need so that you can get the higher commission. So you're just paying yourself so you can pay yourself. Um, so it's, all of those things are what I call lotions and potions and mixes. Yeah, but is it and not for the is 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 that not all for the big earners? The big, the people with the big uh, teams is great for like you know. Whereas a, a person starting at the bottom, there's ah oh, typical 
bloody MLM again. I'm at right. the bottom. I'm not going to make any money at all. And it's going to put people's heads, where it's just a little two-tier system that everyone's making money. That's brilliant. Yeah, but we haven't, we haven't tapped the surface of what, yeah, I suppose what so. how many people can use BuilderAll and use it effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and listen, it's it, it's all how you present it. Yeah. True, you know, true, it, it's, true, it, true. Okay, it's two. Okay, now it's only five. And, and it's a community-based marketing outfit, not an MLM. I mean, just how right. you work. Mm. Yeah, I, true, I true, 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 true. But if he goes with the MLM structure, it goes five levels deep. I think we need to just do a gut check of what, what we think about it in terms of – and. and Place that against the product that we have, right? This is not Avon where you're going to have to buy a bunch of makeup and put it in a closet that you're not going to use. This is not like Amway where you're going to have to buy a bunch of floor cleaner and put it in the closet that you're not going to use. This is something that that you can use every day, not just for the builder all part, but to build another income stream. So it's it's not the, quite the same, and um, I, I think it's an amazing opportunity. I really do, and I think we're going to flip it. I'm gonna, we're going to flip MLM on its head because it's so different than the other, the other programs that are out there that use those multi-levels to pay commission. But will so, you get more of these spammer, these, you know, the big, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, yeah. We it's... will. We'll absolutely get more of the spammers. We'll absolutely, we will absolutely get more of those people that go on YouTube and say, join now, join today, yeah. join free, yeah. and you're going to get $5,000 in 2.5 seconds. But that's where Builderall has hired a lawyer and they will actually go after them that do that. So to make sure that all of our I've heard that before. correctly. I know. Mm. I've heard it before too. But they Eric is pretty adamant. Uh, when we were in uh, London, he was telling us how he had a top level affiliate that was advertising incorrectly. He had what was it, Phoenix? Five hundred in his downline? Over five hundred. And because of the way he was uh, advertising, he booted that guy and then refunded everybody's amount for that, that last month and allowed them to go where they wanted to rejoin wherever they wanted to. So he's really serious. Uh, I'd like to hear that now. That's, that's, yeah. You're talking the whole downline, right? Not just. Well, I'd like to hear yeah. that. That's Everybody great. Everybody signed up. So that was, that's been taken very serious. So watch yeah. your YouTube channel videos, um, watch all yeah. your funnels. Make sure that you read that page that I've posted for you guys in the group um, on the affiliates uh, and the new rules. Yep. And be on that webinar t- tomorrow. And on Monday, be on the meeting. I won't be able. I, well, I, I don't. I don't get the links. You see, but I, I'll try and look for it on Facebook. It, oh, that's right. You don't get it in your back no, office. No, um, no. Subscribe to Builder All USA YouTube channel. Yeah. Go in, subscribe to that channel, and it'll pop up when we go live. Brilliant. Oh, there's one other thing, Shelly. I had I watched last week's um, recording of that of the meeting. Even, uh-huh. You know, I found it in my YouTube uh, notifications. Mm-hmm. It wasn't in my build all. And one thing I did learn that I didn't know that I needed to do is whenever I put an affiliate link in my on YouTube, like my description or anything, mm-hmm. I need to put somewhere in there uh, a income disclosure. I was not doing that, but mm-hmm. I. Got I it. haven't been doing it either. So, and I, but I rarely, rarely, rarely talk about income anything in, um, in any of my videos. It's, it's most of my videos are straightforward teaching how to do mm-hmm. something. So, yeah, that's the way it doesn't affect me too much. Mine mm-hmm. are too. I never mention anything about make money and money you can earn, but mm-hmm. the fact that um, I was putting an affiliate link in there, mm-hmm. and that, that that connects people to an opportunity to earn money. Yep. Without saying anything about earning money at all, so because I was putting in, I always put a link to connect with what I'm doing. Yep. And so I need I need to start putting that income disclosure because I'm putting a in uh, affiliate link and not just a uh, a link to my blog, anything like that. Right. Yep. That's good. It's a good thing to use, and I'll need to go back and do that too because I've not done a good job of doing that. Actually. It wasn't until recently that I even started putting my affiliate links in. People would just find me and find my affiliate link and join. Um, so <clears throat> it's kind of funny that way. But anyway, um, yeah, it, you definitely want to have the right things out there. And that disclaimer 
on your YouTube channels will help for sure. And it yeah. helps mm. the company as a whole. Because yeah. when uh, when Mob went down, uh, I think the main reason Mob went down was because of all the income claims of all the affiliates that were in Mob. Not necessarily yep. what, what Mob was doing specifically, yeah. but that there, there were so many uh, advertisements out there by affiliates that were saying, make, you know, $20,000 in two awful. days. And uh, you, you just couldn't do that unless you bought up the chain to be able to do that. Um, so BuildRaw has really done a good job trying to avoid things like that. Now, does that mean that the FTC or the SEC will never come in and check them? No. If, as BuildRaw gets bigger and bigger, they will continue to keep an eye on them. And see, like me, I would always attach my affiliate link to a domain name. And the domain name is what I would put in there. It wouldn't, you know, so, and it would be a domain name of my name, right. but it was still attached to an affiliate link. So right. I still don't have to put something in it because I would not, I, I didn't want to just boom, hit, put an affiliate link in there for them to see that. I wanted them to see me as a person. And the best way to do that is to uh, attach that affiliate link to a domain name that identified with me. And mm -hmm. when she mentioned that about putting the affiliate, uh, putting an income disclosure in there, an affiliate link is an affiliate link, no matter what you have it attached to. Yeah, right. I hear her. Yep. Absolutely. So those, those meetings, and I say that to say that, uh, as you mentioned, that if, if a person subscribed to Build All USA, anyone is looking at this on recording on boot camp, you subscribe yep. to Build All USA on Mondays, 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central, AM, you get a chance to get uh, uh, access to information that and otherwise you wouldn't have a chance to get access to because it's like being at a board meeting, but being a, a, a viewer at a board meeting, but you, through the chat, they still get a chance to communicate yeah. as if they were on there. So it build all is really opening up is, is communication like someone would open up their books to invite you in to see what build all is about. And that's so unusual for a company like this, right? right. Very unusual. That's another reason, a uh, positive reason why I love BuildRall. And I love Eric, the way he says this last uh, ambassador meeting we had, he, he just said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but this is the way it has to be. And th there's so many times he said, I'm sorry. And it's not really anything that he had done wrong. It was just, he wanted to make Able. it better and he couldn't, make it as good as he wanted it to make it because of restrictions with the, with the laws that are out there. So um, he's, he's so heartfelt when he does this stuff and the MLM thing, he's truly wanting to put more money in y'all's pockets. That's mm -hmm. his, his major goal is mm -hmm. to make it so that you guys get more money in your pockets and it's mm -hmm. not fake. I've been with, I've been with Eric one-on-one -on -one and what he's saying in those meetings and how he says it is the same exact way he says it with him one on one. He's, he's, there's no fake to it at all. He really wants to put more money in your pockets. He's just trying to figure out the best way so that at the end of the day, you can look at your team and say, I've really done a great job and here's the money I'm making and, uh, and be proud of what you're, what, what you're doing and, and, and how you're doing it and the team that you've developed. And uh, so he's trying really hard to set that up for BuilderAll's longevity so that you can keep that money coming in and, uh, and, and make good money while you're working with BuilderAll. He's doing his best to make that happen because he knows that's the key to growth. And what I, just, I just see, see a, a, a question in there from, from Judy. What type of email would you set up for uploaded leads, regular or sequence? Um, if they're uploaded, then I would do, if they're already in the, um, it's already in the subscriber group, I'd actually do just a broadcast email to them. Yeah. And if you, and for me, when I do an uploaded email, if I have a list that, that I'm moving and I'm bringing to build all, um, I use a regular email and what I do, that one email I sent out to them explaining what it is about and allow them to opt in and start receiving information about this opportunity and if they do then they connect when they opt in you know i have a little forwarding page that they can opt into from that it gives them the option to start receiving sequences yeah just remember that you've got the ability to first of all i wouldn't i would not upload until you had your subscriber list ready your email sequence ready and your email is all done and active 
and then they'll get them <coughs> according to the schedule that you set up. Right. But if you've not done that yet, then I would just send a broadcast email and, and that'll hit them. You do have the ability to do the sequence and said to current and future subscribers, but they might get slapped with a lot of them at once. Right, right. And there's one other thing I want to say, not to prolong the, the meeting, because I know we have to go. You <laughs> mentioned about Eric. One thing that stood out to me very, very uh, hard, very sincere about Eric is that as an owner, he did something that I that very few owners did. He admitted that he was wrong about some mm -hmm. recommendations that was recommended to him from Builder All Leaders users. Right. And what I like about it is he admitted it right there on the Zoom in front of everyone. And then the person that he was uh, uh, admitting that he was wrong about, they were on there. And as if they were face to face, he was telling them in front of everyone that you were right, I was wrong. We're going to go with the suggestion that you recommended. And that doesn't happen with a lot of uh, uh, owners. They don't admit their wrongness. They always find a reason why they should make a change, but they don't give credit to why the change should take place. They don't even give credit to where the recommendation for the change came from. But but again, sincerely, he not just did it one time, but he mentioned a few times. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it was Salvatore or someone like that. But, you know, for that, just for that, it really expressed how sincere he is about using build all to help people and not using, and he's not just trying to use build all to make money, but his first desire is to use this as a tool to help people. Right. And that's yeah. what I like. It's not, if, if it was about money for him, he wouldn't be, uh, he wouldn't be looking at doing something different with the compensation plan or anything like that. It isn't about money to Eric. And mm -hmm. I've not met Eric in person, but I've, been exposed to him enough through uh, the internet, he's actually sincere about what he oh, yeah. does. Yeah. Yes. I, I hope that at some point you will all get a chance to meet him because he is so sincere and uh, he is so authentic. What you see on your videos and the way he talks is exactly the way he talks when you meet him in person. And it's stunningly the same, right? So whatever you get on video, that's what you get with the real Eric. And he's just a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. He cracks me up all the time. <laughs> yep, I'm very Shelly, excited. go and put your feet up out of that. Go on. We're holding you up here. Jesus, we're terrible. We're go terrible. I will let you guys go. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And again, I'll see you in the morning on the weekly webinar call or and or, safe. and or on the boot camps. So bye, you guys. Have a Don't great take day. Take care. All the best. Be safe. Bye, be everybody. Safe. Take care. Bye, 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 bye. bye, bye.